Today, we talk about edge rank. Hey, all you Coffee Talk fans, it's me, James Garland, at the James Garland on all social media. And today, as promised, I'm making this video exclusively for you talking about edge rank. Okay, well, that's not totally true. It is on my YouTube channel after all, but I'm not sharing it with anyone else. I've only shared it here in this group. Let's start off from the beginning. What is edge rank? Edge rank is Facebook's algorithm designed to improve UX by eliminating irrelevant stories and improving user interaction through relevant, engaging posts, at the same time generating more revenue by helping businesses utilize their paid advertising. Huh? In basic terms, Facebook came up with a way to filter out all the boring, spammy, crappy posts so you and I can have more fun while we're scrolling through our feeds. So why did Facebook come up with EdgeRank to begin with? Why go through all this trouble? Well, there are many reasons, although you could argue the validity of some of those reasons depending on who you are. According to the website ebiz.mba, they released a study this month, January 2017, which shows that Facebook is still the number one social platform with over 1.1 billion unique visitors per month. With more and more usage, that means there's a lot more noise going into the feed. Among that 1.1 billion are also a bunch of businesses who are continuously using Facebook to try and elevate their brand in the public eye and get their name out there. The flip side of EdgeRank is it can be used by Facebook to limit the organic reach of these businesses, basically forcing them to have to invest money in their sponsored advertising, generating more income for Facebook. Now, in order for me to be able to help y'all, or use guys for all my friends back home in the North, I need to first describe how EdgeRank actually works. The EdgeRank algorithm assigns a unique score to each and every post that goes out on the Facebook feed from businesses and from individuals. Just like with anything where you're keeping score, the higher a post EdgeRank score, the more likely it is to be seen by others and the more visibility it gets in the feed. Uh, are you sure about that? Are you sure about what? That. What? Higher the score versus greater the score? The greater the score, the higher the score? I don't know. Maybe. I'm just going to say higher the score, and if that's poor grammar, then Rone can light a fire under my butt. Mm -hmm. Any post edge rank score is based on three key ingredients. Affinity score, time decay, and edge weight. A-T-E. Eight. Really? Yes. Really. Eight. I'm motivated by food, so deal with that. Affinity score determines how relevant a post is to you based on who you interact with and who interacts with you. Not only that, but who you are connected with and how you interact with those connected people. For instance, I'm very connected to my wife, at Tora Trudor, go follow her. Not only do I see the posts that she puts on higher up in my feed, I also see posts which she comments on, even if they aren't people who are on my friends list. That being said, I'm more likely to see things she comments on when we have mutual friends and how many mutual friends we share with that particular friend. And then how many mutual interests, those mutual friends of that mutual friend, basically it's a whole convoluted system. But it's measuring all different layers of how you are connected to a post that might potentially be interesting to you. Time decay is how old a post is. The older the post, the less relevant it becomes, the less interesting it is to you and me. And with time decay, it's allowed Facebook to really push its on this day memory recall feature and other apps you can use in tandem with Facebook, such as Time Hop. Now, there are other elements which affect how quickly time decay affects a post, how much engagement it's got, how often the poster logs into Facebook, and how often that poster engages with their own post. The last ingredient is edge weight. Likes, comments, and shares are what Facebook calls edges, and they have a simple formula which you can follow. Shares are greater than comments, and comments are greater than likes. The more likes, comments, and shares a post has, the greater the edge weight of it 
and the greater the chance it's gonna appear in your feed. Well now, is Edge Rank a good thing or a bad thing? To be perfectly honest, it depends. Come on. I know, real useful, isn't it? <gasps> Casual users of Facebook, like my grandmother, like the fact that it filters out all the garbage that they don't wanna view, and they can just get right to their family's photos. For people who integrate usage of Facebook on a daily basis, it can be a bit of a pain in the butt. You're more likely to see the posts of your friends who use Facebook on a daily basis or frequent basis, maybe as frequent as you use Facebook. However, if you have a friend or a relative who's on infrequently, you're likely to not even see their post in the feed, regardless of whether you pick top stories or most recent. That can be detrimental because what if they have an important announcement to make? Maybe an engagement, maybe an event that you'd be interested in attending, or God forbid, maybe the passing of a mutual friend or a loved one. You miss that, you feel like a bit of a heel, but it's not really your fault. It's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you. But it's because they're not all that engaged, you miss out on it. What about for businesses? Well, here's the kicker. Edge rank is a blessing. First, it forces all businesses to actually engage with their audience, not just spam post a bunch of ads. A big company with a huge budget to push their presence on Facebook, but has zero engagement, is going to suffer and be virtually invisible. That's why it's a benefit to businesses and especially small businesses because it gives you a chance to differentiate yourself from the big companies who aren't even interacting with potential buyers. By engaging on Facebook, it gives your business a human element. It shows empathy and it fosters authenticity. Now, I'm sure the big question that you all are wondering is, how do I work with EdgeRank? Well, the good news is I have three tips that you can start using right now. The important thing to remember are the three E's. The first E is engage. You need to go out and engage with your audience, be your friends, potential buyers, or people who share similar interests with you. You need to have a conversation. When you see a post come up in your feed, like it, comment on it, read the article, ask a question, maybe challenge the information that's in the article. Self-like your own posts. There's nothing wrong with that. That will help improve edge rank. E number two, entice. Entice people to engage with your posts. Put out posts which call people to engage with you. For instance, around Christmas time, how many of your friends or people you know posted, quote, all I want for Christmas is blank. Another example which has been going on for the past year and is still going on is this one. Hey, let's play a game. Enter my name and then with your autofill, click the middle word 15 times and post it to my wall. You can do other things. Have a poll, have a yes, no, like for this, heart for that. Or just ask a simple question. Anything that will actually force the reader or compel the reader to want to respond. The third E is entertain. Your posts have to be entertaining. I don't mean entertaining like they have to make people laugh all the time, but they need to be entertaining in the sense that they play to different people's interests and spark engagement. Notable author and businessman Gary Vaynerchuk has this awesome quote, if you're going to interrupt people's entertainment, you must be entertaining. Now I said that there are three steps that you can follow right there, the three E's. There's also a bonus tip. Remember a few moments ago when I mentioned Facebook's on this day feature? Well, there's a way that you can game the system and improve your edge rank by utilizing that feature. Now, I'm not talking about sharing when an on this day appears in your feed. What I am talking about is engaging with the post that is being referenced in that on this day. Let's say it's an old photo that comes up. Go ahead and give it a self like. You're gonna all of a sudden see other people start liking it. If it has some comments, go back in the feed and comment or reply to the comments that are there. It doesn't matter if the post is one, two, three, five, 10, 11 years old. If you engage with it, it's going to bump to the top of people's feeds, especially the people who may have interacted with it in the past. And that's it. That's the nuts and bolts of what EdgeRank is and how you can use it to your advantage. I sincerely hope that you found this video entertaining and useful and that as you start using these four tips, you'll find success and you'll find it working to your advantage for your business or your personal page on Facebook. I'm out.
How many people do you see waiting at the doctor's office, waiting at the DMV, waiting at the DMV, waiting at the DMV, waiting at... Any post edge rank score is determined by three key ingredients. I forgot what they were. Cinnamon, cardamom, <laughs> rosemary. The edge rank algorithm. Al, al. Facebook came up with a way to fill my pub. <laughs> the flip side of Ed Rank. Ed Rank. <laughs> Who's Ed Rank? That's Rank. There's a chance that you might miss it, and then you feel like a complete doofus for missing it, and then you're stuck sitting at home eating cake, wallowing in the corner. <laughs> Still, I'm hungry. <laughs> Eight. In fact, actually, I think that would be that would be kind of funny. What if we told people go to the YouTube page and on on their mobile device? It won't work on the computer, right? No, they don't have autofill. So go on their mobile device and like see how many times they say like James Garland, and then hit that middle button 15 times. That would be really awesome. I want to see them do that. That'd be cool.